Good morning, everybody. Michael DeMaven. Today, I'm going to show you how to micro focus adjust your cameras using a cereal box and a ruler. Now, there are some commercial products out there you can buy. There's different types of targets. Some of them are cheap. Some of them are expensive. The reason why I like this method is because it uses mostly the same principles. However, before you get into micro focus adjustment, a warning I have to give you is to absolutely make sure that all other options have been looked into. The number one culprit for blur images in my experience is a slow shutter speed so if you're not sure that these other settings were dialed in correctly and we go in and we micro focus adjustment we're just going to be making problems for ourselves so beginning and intermediate photographers i'd kind of steer you away from this make sure that you learn the basics fast shutter speeds correct focusing modes things of that nature technique user error types of things that can be avoided once you get experienced and you're just not happy with the sharpness or the focus and you're sure your shutter speed was correct you're sure the right focusing mode was used then it's time to start thinking about this before you send it in to the manufacturer we can even show you how to correctly micro focus adjust and in some cases it's not going to resolve your problem so this is not a silver bullet your focusing systems are probably never going to be perfect but I am going to show you how to do this because it's cheap fast and everybody should know you know at least how to check this in this example I'm going to be using the Canon 90d but this will work with most cameras that have micro focus adjustment and it's very important to note that this has a live view as well as an optical viewfinder. These are two different focusing methods. Live view uses focusing points built into the sensor. The optical focusing system uses a focusing array that's built underneath the mirror box. When we do micro focus adjustment, we are doing it for the optical viewfinder. And the reason is because in live view, when the image is hitting the sensor, the sensor is analyzing the subject matter and it's defining its focus in real time. The focusing array in the optical viewfinder is a little bit different. It's a lot to go into, but suffice it to say, it splits the image and it can predict how far and how fast it's moving, things of that nature. And when we do micro focus adjustment, at least in the case of the 90D, we are adjusting it for the optical viewfinder only. The reason why I make a note to point that out is because if you're in live view, and you're trying to micro focus adjust, you will not notice a difference as you make these changes. When we're talking about the setup, you're going to need to be mindful of your distance and the range is really between five to 50 times of your focal length. So if you're shooting with a 100 millimeter lens, you want to be at least past 500 millimeters or 50 centimeters. The rule of thumb, is basically you want to be able to see your depth of field and visualize it. And we will demonstrate this as we get into it, but lenses have certain focusing distances. So if you're within that focusing distance, your lens is not going to be able to focus. If you are backed up far enough, your depth of field will be so deep you couldn't see the change. So the reason why I like a cereal box is because it's cheap, it's readily available, and it typically has high contrast subject matter, talking about the nutritional value. And rulers are also readily available. And what I've done here is I have set up a cereal box and I've aligned the camera as perpendicular as possible to the cereal box. And then on an angle, a little slant, I have set up a ruler and I've made a little mark right next to the ruler. It's kind of hard to see if we zoom in, maybe we can see it. That point right there, this little black notch is what is going to line up specifically on the ruler. I like this nutritional information because we get very fine detail and we can see the sharpness and things of that nature. Something else you're going to notice is that as I'm touching the camera, you can see it shaking. So I am going to use a two or a 10 second timer in order to reduce shake. I'm also going to try to use fast shutter speeds to minimize any possible camera shake. And I am on a tripod, but as we get into this, I'll be demonstrating why I'm doing certain things. So if you have a camera that has live view, this is going to be a little bit easier, I think, because we get an image that we can compare it to. So I am going to zoom in to 70 millimeters. I've already measured all this out. I'm going to center my focusing square to make sure that I am on the center focusing point. And I'm gonna pick up the camera and move it over. I'm gonna to try to get this as center as possible to that mark. It doesn't have to be perfect, but there it is. And another thing I wanna point out, we can do this at 2.8. So I'm gonna demonstrate this, what a, a very shallow depth of field is. And I'll tell you why I don't like to use 2.8 for this. So I'm gonna take the picture. A Couple things I wanna point out, here's the box. This is flat, this is going to be parallel with my sensor. And then we have this incline of the ruler off to the right. So as we play this back, 
you're going to notice that just orienting the serial box parallel to the sensor and the ruler diagonally to the side, we have a couple really nice tools here. You don't need to buy anything. We can look at the detail in the fine contrast of the nutritional information and we can ask ourselves, hey, is this in focus? In live view, it should be. And as we scroll over to the right, what will happen is now we have something to measure the depth of field. It's at this slight incline. And what you will notice is that 18 looks to be the sharpest point of it. This is a bit of an optical illusion because there's a curve in the ruler itself. But trust me, looking from above, the 18 is definitely lined up with this point. And I am looking at the individual millimeter marks. And I'm looking for something that has the highest degree of, of contrast and sharpness. And looking at this, it does. So the problem with shooting at 2.8, and some people don't know this, is that when you shoot wide open, your lenses are not at their sharpest. Okay, that means you can be in focus and the lens may not be the sharpest it can be. Typically, when you start to stop down your lens, so we're at 2.8, if I go to, let's say 5.6, obviously the exposure has changed, so I'm going to use a slower shutter speed. I'm just eyeballing it based on exposure. We're on a tripod, you know, I might wanna bump this up just to use a faster shutter speed. Be really paranoid about it. I don't like going too high on ISO because the higher the ISO goes, you start to lose sharpness, but we'll just go here. So I'm going to repeat this at F5.6. I wanna demonstrate something to you. Play that back. Zooms way in, right? So we can zoom in. I think it's easier to do it from the back of the camera instead of you know, you know, taking your card out and whatnot. But something you'll notice is that we get far greater detail. Look at the sharpness just behind that depth of field. Okay, so the 18 is kind of soft now, and, it, and I am focused right here. We're, we're zoomed in way close, but you, what you can see and what you'll notice is that the depth of field has a thickness to it. Okay, there, there's a certain amount of depth. It doesn't end at the box, and when you get into the deeper parts of it, it actually in, increases its sharpness. I would say the sharpest point is probably here, half a centimeter back into the box. So this is an important idea is that you can stop your aperture down just a little bit and you can see where that sharpest point is. Typically the camera is focusing a little bit towards the front of it. In a perfect world, it should be about one third into the depth of field. But you can see the depth of field changing. There it is, look, see how blurry this is? Blurry, 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 now it's getting sharp, sharp, sharp. And now it's getting blurry, blurry, blurry again. So the reason why I like this method is it allows us to visualize the depth of field. If we wanted to use something like F4, we come down in here, adjust the shutter speed, we can do it again, no problem. I think this is I think this is a good exercise if you're brand new to photography and, and you just want to learn. I think this is a good way to do it. Again, the focus point is at the tick mark of 18. So it looks like it's right there. But you can see the sharpness a little bit better, just a little bit deeper into it. So in terms of live view, doing this correctly, we're there. Okay, I, I feel pretty good about this F4. And now I am going to repeat this using the optical viewfinder. So in order to do that, I'm going to, going to go out of live view. I'm going to check to make sure my focusing square is on that point, And I'm going to take a picture. So let's take a look at that image. Another thing that uh, some, students have been doing is they've been zooming in way beyond the 100% mark. And so they're zooming in at three or 400% and they're like, Hey, it's, it's blurry. Yeah. When you zoom in and over hundred percent, things are going to get blurry, but I'm looking at this. The detail looks pretty good in terms of sharpness. And then I'm going to come over here and look at the ruler measure this. Yeah. It's about the same. So the question you probably are going to have is how do we know it's out of focus and it needs to be micro focus adjust. I'm going to demonstrate that. So we're going to, in the case of the 90D, it's in the custom function two. It's going to be item 16. There's going to be something similar depending on the camera that you're using that has this feature. And because I have a 24 to 72.8 lens, it recognizes it. If it doesn't recognize the lens, sometimes it'll ask you to register and you can type in the serial number or designation to help you remember it. But we're gonna come in and we're going to hit Q. So in here we have the option to micro focus adjust the wide angle, which would be at 24 millimeters, as well as the telephoto end, which is 70 millimeters. And there is a couple important icons you should definitely be aware of is the camera 
and then we have this mountain. And so what this says is this is close and this is far. Now, because we're testing this at 70 millimeters, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mess this up intentionally. So I'm just using my micro focus adjustment and I am moving it closer towards the camera intentionally. I'm gonna to try to screw this up. I'm going to tap the shutter button. Oh, we could also view the, the, the lens information. Here's the serial number of my lens, right? So I'm gonna tap the shutter button, make sure that I'm going to go out of live view and I'm gonna mess this focus up intentionally so it doesn't use the live view focus, right? I'm on one shot so I can hear that beep. So let's play this image back. And remember, we micro focus adjust toward the camera. Change just a little teeny tiny bit. You can see that the contrast is the sharpest point is a little bit closer towards the front of it. Looking at the lettering, this actually looks pretty good. I could probably leave it there if I wanted to, believe it or not. Let's compare it with this, the one we did before. Where's the sharpest point on here? To me, it looks like it's at about 18.4 centimeters in there, maybe 18.2. Come in and look at this new one. Didn't change much, but I would say this one's at 18.1. So we moved it maybe three millimeters towards the camera. If you guys want to see the opposite, let's just go ahead and do that. Why not? You know, if, if this is, you know, paranoid to you, you can always change it back to where you had it, right? Just change it, come down to telephoto. I'm going to change this all the way over. See if we can shift where that micro focus is. Hit OK. Tap the shutter button. I'm going to check it in live view. I'm going to mess this up again. So now that I've intentionally focused away, we can see that the camera, the sharpest point is about 19.1. So we've moved it almost a full centimeter in the other direction. And this is how micro fo focus adjust works. See how soft the letters are? And the idea is that if you have lenses that are out of alignment, and this has been the case, we have a, a great Facebook group of 90D owners. And what was happening was they were shooting in live view and it was, you know, looking great. And then the way they, when they would flip over to the optical viewfinder, lenses that should be working, they were getting out of focus. And we've had a couple users go in and micro focus adjust and everything's cool now, everything's fine. The 90D also remember it has that really dense pixel density. So yeah, I mean, it's gonna make a difference if your lenses are, you know, they're not quite dialed in or maybe they're out of alignment or maybe they're older lenses. This could be a really worthwhile way just to check and verify it before you invest in a calibration tool or sending it to the camera company. In any event, that is the serial box in ruler method. It's an inexpensive, fast, easy way to see if your lenses need to be micro focus adjust through the optical viewfinder. That's the technique that I use and do. Keep in mind, wide open lenses are not as sharp as when you've stopped them down a little bit. You want to visualize your depth of field and find out exactly where that sharpest focusing point is. And once that's figured out, you'll probably want to go out and test it in some real world shooting conditions. If this doesn't resolve, if you're sure you're doing this right and your lens is still wacky, then at that point, you might want to send it in to the manufacturer and find out what's going on. In any event, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you like this kind of content, I hope to earn your subscription. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time.